everybody, and welcome. The Atheist Experience is live, April 6, 2003. I'm your host, Martin Wagner. Ashley Perry, and my co host, as Good always. Afternoon. Thank you for joining us again. Um, we have a truncated show today. It's only an hour. We'll, uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, <laughs> but this show is, as always, sponsored by Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. ACA has weekly meetings. Every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. at Hot Jumbo Bagels, which is located downtown, 307 West 5th Street, near the, uh, between Guadalupe and Lamar, uh, except for the first Lavaca. Sunday of each. Hmm? Lavaca. Well, see, it's <laughs> been so long. Ah! Well, well, it is between Guadalupe and Lamar. True, so, but, but it's to really it even farther. <laughs> to, to really kind of narrow it down. Uh, but of course, except for the first Sunday of, of each month when we have our lecture series in the, in the mayor room of the Austin History Center, which is at 9th and Guadalupe. And today we had our lecture. A uh, speaker was uh, one of our members, uh, Matthew Juliana, who was, who was a uh, geology, I believe, professor yes, at uh, yes. Southwest Texas uh, University, and gave a fascinating lecture speculating on uh, possible uh, actual historical events that may have inspired popular biblical myths as well as some other myths uh, like yeah. uh, you know, Atlantis and stuff like that. Um, so it's you know, purely speculative, of course, but indicating that uh, you know, it's quite possible that real events in geological history... Yeah. Cause Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, and inspired so, those stories to be yeah. developed in the first place. So, kind of neat and a good, worthwhile roundtable discussion. At the same time, so that's great. Uh, you know, uh, next lecture actually won't we won't have one in May because that's um, elections. But then in June, uh, our speaker will be Don Baker, and he'll be speaking on uh, Christianity as a meme, which uh, that should be very interesting. Yeah, I spoke and, on memes a couple months back. Uh huh. Just the general what they are and how they work. So and I guess so it's now, just going to be follow through. Now applying it yeah. specifically to Christianity. Hmm. So Excellent. Should be yeah, interesting. So should be good. And, and as I understand it now, we, and we've got uh, potential speakers lined up for July and August oh, as well. Yeah. Okay. And, so, and Michelle indicated. So um, okay. we're really on the ball, which is why we're going <laughs> to uh, keep uh, cracking the whip and make her do that job, I guess. She doesn't want to do it, but she's good at it, so... That's her problem. <laughs> Deal. That's that's what happens when you're good at something. You know, people will people want to keep you around. Uh, but anyway, um, thanks for joining us. As always, uh, let's see uh, other announcements uh, for the group. Of course, uh, Godless Gamers Monday nights at Russell and Virginia Glasser's house and Atheist Happy Hour, which is Thursday evenings uh, around seven thirty eight or so uh, at Antonio's Tex Mex, which is near uh, the uh, Highway one eighty three and um, I thirty five intersections on the southbound. Feeder Road, and people trickle in all night. That's just social gathering, and there's usually a table with uh, you know, a little sign-up so you can see where everyone is if you're new to the gang and want to meet some folks. Um, the Nonprofits, which uh, was for a year uh, our weekly internet radio show, and of which you can go on our website, and there's a radio show page, and then you can download and listen to uh, a dozen or so uh, of the last episodes that were done. They're coming back. They finally made up their minds. Yes, it's time to bring back the nonprofits, but now they don't have an actual date or when or how or where or what, what, what's going on. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they, now they're working out the details, but they have at least made the decision to go off hiatus. So, uh, mm. you know, whenever, <laughs> well, as soon as we know the day, we'll tell you. Uh, but it was a great show. You know, there was a live chat. It was on atheistnetwork.com. It was live on Saturday afternoons. Uh, and there was like an interactive chat room that you could, uh, you know, and a lot of people would plug into and, and interact with the show while it was going on live. And so we don't, but we don't know if it's going to be the same day, same time, what have you. And, and we don't even know if they're going to keep doing it on atheistnetwork.com, although they might. But at least they're coming back, so that's happy news for everyone. Um, and uh, the University of Atheists and Agnostics, let's not forget, last but uh, certainly not least, uh, the fine UT student organization that was start, started up in the fall semester, uh, by Charles Tabany is, you know, well underway in its second semester and I understand, uh, you know, enjoying much success. And they have their weekly meetings right there on your screen, Fridays at 4 p.m. in Rainy Hall. Uh, 3.102A is the room and there's the email address if you're a U UT student or faculty member, UAA at mail.utexas.edu is the inform uh, information email address to, uh, find stuff out about the group. So good to have a successful and, um, well-organized uh, atheists group at UT, because there certainly wasn't one when I was there. Uh, okay, what else? Um, I think that's just about it for announcements. Okay, Easter weekend uh, uh, coming up. There are uh, two major conventions uh, happening uh, in the country. There's uh, American Atheist Convention in Chicago. No, we're not affiliated with American Atheists. But there's also the Atheist Alliance Convention in Tampa, Florida. Going to have some great guests. James Randi, 
Uh, Richard Dawkins are going to uh, put in appearances there. I believe Robert Carroll? No, wait. He was at The Amazing Meeting. The guy who runs the Skeptics Dictionary website. Oh, I don't know wow. if he's going to be... At Athe- I don't know that he is. I think I might be confusing that with something else. But, um, you know, so for Atheists Who Want to Travel, I know our very own Michelle is going to that yes. convention. Yes. So uh, good to have somebody representing out yes. there. But, uh, boy, I sure do wish I could go. I mean, Dawkins, for <laughs> crying out loud. Yeah, you know, would damn. be fun. But anyway, uh, so I think that's just about it. Uh, you can visit our lovely website to find out more about us, atheist-community.org. Um, and uh, also on that website is a great fact page um, for frequently asked questions. If you've never watched the show before, this is a live call-in show. Uh, you know, we take uh, calls from folks like you who uh, you know have questions for us, and sometimes it gets quite feisty, but... You know, we've been doing the show now for several years, so um, we we get the same question every now and again. Well, not every now and again. Pretty much all the time. We get like this, there's this <laughs> McDonald's menu of common questions that uh, everyone seems to ask us. And so uh, check our website, FAC, and if you don't see our question there, then, uh, you know, if you do have a question and you see the answer there, well, then there you go. But this show is live. It's a call-in show. And because we're we're running on such short time today, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and put the phone number up uh, pretty quickly, like, you know, after... When Ashley gets going on the news, starting yeah. now. Okay. Right? All right. Get off of me. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <Clear. laughs> okay. Most people, I'm sure, have heard about something that's been going on, around, uh, what, out east um, mm-hmm. in Iraq. Apparently, we're bombing the heck out of them or something. Yes, it was same. Um, apparently, the spawn of Billy Graham spawn is of out Bi- there. I love that. Uh, Franklin Graham. <laughs> you turn, you can turn, Ashley, you can turn, just turn a phrase out of the blue. And you love, the spawn. Yes. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Franklin Graham is sitting out in Kuwait or somewhere in that general area, and he has relief workers poised and ready to roll into Iraq to provide for the po- for the population's post-war physical and spiritual needs. Mm. Uh, they have a group called the Samaritan's Purse, mm-hmm. and the group's main objective is to help refugees <clears throat> and people who have lost their homes or are sick and hungry as a result of the war. Ah. We realize we're an Arab country and we can't just go out and preach, Graham said in a telephone interview. Um, however, he added, I believe as we work, God will give us opportunities to tell us about his son, to tell others about his son. We are there to reach out to love them and save them. And as a Christian, I do this in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, of course, you know, the first question that I, I think any, you know, savvy Iraqi person would, would <laughs> pounce back out is, you know, well, well, you know, why wasn't Jesus around when all these, you know, missiles were coming at us? Exactly. Um, you you know, love us, but you're going to bomb yeah. the heck out of us. Now, you know, now here's the thing. There are some people in our group who are opposed to the war, and there are some yes. people in our group who are not opposed to the war. And we certainly don't want to get into that discussion on yeah, this show. Yeah, that's, that's it's not the forum for very it. Very off you topic. Know? And it's great. You know, and the per- and or our organization, of course, because we encourage debate and free thought and all the rest of it. That's yeah. fine. You know, I mean, we have people from all sorts of disparate political views in the group. Yeah. And so that's terrific. So, uh, but this, I think, you know, is 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 sufficient to cause. Anybody, you know, a moment of pause. Yeah. Because Samaritan's Purse, like so many of these faith-based charities, go in there and they do have this agenda, which is to, you know, they swoop down on people who have been stricken by tragedy, right? And they provide them all of this aid. And then, of course, but there's a hard soul conversion effort that goes with it every time. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is known to happen. So for them yeah. to pretend... And also, and also, this, this isn't part of their intent. Is, yeah. and, and, and this is what's causing a lot of concern, right? Yeah. And Franklin Graham also, uh-huh. he is the guy, he wrote a book a couple of years back called, uh, what, The Name, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, two months after September 11th, he called Islam a very evil and wicked religion. <laughs> Last summer, he said Muslims had suffi- had, hadn't sufficiently apologized for the terrorist attacks. And he challenged Muslim leaders to offer to help rebuild Lower Manhattan or compensate the families of victims to show they condemn terrorism. Well, I haven't seen him apologize for Fred Phelps. <laughs> so, well, yeah, right. I mean, all the members of one, you know, just exactly the, the non-fanatical, insane members of one group should not, you know, exactly. Let's condemn be held all responsible. Of Muslim and Islam, every yeah. person. Because a couple wackos out there decide to fly a plane into a building. Yeah, Let's should, condemn them all. Right. Should Franklin Graham have to, uh, you know, answer for, uh, you Crusades. know, the, the, the Klan? Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. Exactly. So, yeah. He hasn't but, gotten but, but there But he's perfectly happy to paint Klan, so. Muslims with this broad brush. Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. But of course, and, and what's doubly ironic, right, is this comment he makes about, you know, Islam being a wicked religion when, you know, 
his religion, you know, the God of his religion <laughs> is a guy who says, yeah. worship me forever, accept my son as your personal savior, or you'll fry for all eternity in the flames of hell. Yeah. Now, what do you call that? Yeah. yeah. We want to help them to have the true freedom in Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> true freedom to, you know, be a Christian or burn in hell. Yeah. 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 So... Uh, the following, mm. the comments followed a string of remarks about Islam and Muslims as Graham promoted his book, The Name. Mm -hmm. In it, Graham wrote that Islam, unlike Christianity, has, has among its basic teachings a deep intolerance for those who follow other faiths. Wait a minute. <laughs> All monotheistic <laughs> religions are intolerant. Exactly. That's okay. the whole point of them. I mean, yeah, the, the whole thing with Christianity, Christianity is all about telling Christians, oh, look, you're the wonderful chosen people yeah. who, who have, it's all because the of accepting Christ, you get to spend eternity flying around with little wings and a halo. You yeah. get to be in paradise forever. All those other non-Christians are bad. Because yeah. they didn't accept Christianity. Or if they're not bad, they're, they need their, it's their fault. They're the ones responsible for going to hell because they chose to not be Christian. They made the bad choice, so it's their fault. So you have to, you know, wean them away from those ideas. Yeah. You know, so that's what, so that's built, intolerance is built in to all of these belief systems. Yeah. You know, and so, so it's, but of course, you know, any, any adherent of these kinds of belief systems yeah. is not going to see it that way. They're going to see, well, ours is the one that's right. Yeah. You know, and the other guys is the one that's bad. You know, like uh, there's a funny article that was posted to our mailing list a while ago about talking about the prayer warriors. All the Christians getting together in, in, in churches who are getting together in churches with this campaign of let's pray for the president and the troops and we're prayer warriors. Yeah. And we're going to all like oh, do these yeah. mass prayers, yeah. which I guess will make God more interested than just one person praying. If like, uh, But it's this whole idea of, you know, well, if you talk to these folks and tell them about... You know, there's people on the other side praying also that you <laughs> that we lose. I know, exactly. Yeah. And the comment was made, of course, that well, that's true, but you know, the prayer warriors. I mean, these sorts of people th like to think that oh, well, we know all the other people are praying, but it's our prayers that are the I ones know, that we're work. The only ones that are going to be answered. Yeah, our prayers are the effective ones because yeah. our God is the real one. Yeah. It's it's everyone else is wasting their time. I mean, it's funny. It's just yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. It, about, it would be funny if it weren't so you know yeah. mm, messed yeah. up, but you know. But luckily, there are a few, a few groups who are very much opposed to him being over there, not surprisingly. Well, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> one, the administration in the U.S. has been trying to promote this as, look, we're trying to mm -hmm. you know, free the Iraqi people, stuff like that. It's not yeah. a war of religions. And so yeah. I mean, by having been this very... Christian group tromp in right behind our army mm -hmm. and convert them all to Christianity, that kind of puts a damper on that image. Right. And so they're trying to be very careful to make sure that they don't. Well, you know, the fundamentalists here in this country, after 9-11... When Bush was, you know, making the very calculated and shrewd, but, but you know, yeah. well-chosen political choice to embrace the American Muslim community and say, yeah. we know you're not responsible for this. Muslims are fine people. Yeah. This was a group of fanatics, what have you. The fundamental, the religious right, the Christian right, hate, they really got mad at him about that. Yeah. They really got angry with him yeah. for, you know... Daring to suggest like that, that could there act, could be one Islam could be a decent religion. Yeah, one decent Muslim so, person in the world, you yeah. know, for him to dare su to, to suggest that was just horrible. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and not only that, but they also have um, there are some Christians actually mm -hmm. in Iraq and such, and they've been building their churches and doing their work, and it's it's a very it's a it's a relationship between the Islam and the Christians over there that's kind of tenuous but they're starting to kind of settle down and at least be able to live and work together. Yeah. And now if you got these, you know, and depending on the area, yeah. you know these these people from over here coming in, yeah. you know, preaching the word and they're not as, you know, careful and tactful about things. Yeah. It could just, you know, whatever relationship it has for them that's kind of working out could just be blown. Down. Well, you remember what happened uh, about a year or so ago, there were these two women who were missionaries. Yes. I think this was in Afghanistan. Yeah. Yeah, and they this was when the Taliban was still in power as a matter of fact. And they got, you know, arrested, right? Yeah. Uh in you know, and and really in trouble because they were out there openly preaching Christianity. And they knew and, and but it was interesting that before they were finally released and brought back to the states, all the news uh organizations were referring to them as relief workers. Yeah. And you know, international, you know, humanitarian aid workers, okay? Yeah. Then when they got back, they were suddenly these Great Christian heroes. Yeah, exactly. They they completely owned up to the fact that yeah we were missionary was we went into this hyper fundamentalist, yeah. you know Muslim regime where they just basically put a gun to your head if, yeah. if you, and and 
brazenly broke all their laws and got punished for it. But look, we're back. So doesn't that mean we're great and we're better than they are? And, and <laughs> it was just crazy. So yeah, yeah. you know, they're not going to make any pretense of, you know, they don't care Yeah, because they answer to this higher power. And if they get shot, well, hooray, there's just another martyr for Jesus. So yes, yeah, so these are the people who are over there ready to bring some relief to the Iraqis. <laughs> now bringing them relief is a fine thing, but Bring them spiritual relief by showing them Jesus. It's none of their damn business. Okay? Yeah, it's, it's I mean, kind of pushing the bar. Yeah. You know. so. I mean, you know, we, we're there to get this, this dictator out there. We're there exactly. to shut down his rape rooms and his torture chambers. And that, you know, and, yeah. then, and then once we're done, you know, help them set up the... But don't... If our constitution here in America prevents us from dictating some sort of religious... Exactly. You know, adherence... It should uh, you know, would, It shouldn't... I mean, of course, missionaries are going to go over there, but... Uh, of course. The, you know, at least our administration is 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 making a right choice by distancing some, themselves from Graham yeah. and his people. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Well, what else before we go to calls? I okay. mean, we're going to start racking them up here pretty quickly because, like I said, we got a short day today. Yeah. So, um, four seven seven two two eight eight is that number to call us live. And uh, what else have you? Okay, I forgot to get the article, but mm-hmm. I just remembered while we're talking here. Uh, a couple months back, mm-hmm. we had. Uh, a thing that we noticed on the air, we got on the email list, afterlifetelegrams.com. Mm. It was the ones where uh, it was a small person. You send them your email or whatever, mm-hmm. and you pay per word. That was an Arlo was on. I think so, yeah, yeah. maybe. Okay. Um, but anyway, um, they charge you per word. What they do is they have a terminally ill patient memorize the message <laughs> so that when they die, they can hopefully deliver it to your loved one. <laughs> you thought it was real. Oh. I said it was a bit too way out there to be. I mean, this it's just yeah. completely ridiculous. Uh-huh. It turns out I have to eat my words. Martin was right. Oh, see, it was real. I'm... This is an actual thing that people do. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> now, the thing is, I, I, no. my only point was you can never underestimate. <laughs> the stupider it looks, the more true it probably is. Right? I mean, <laughs> now one thing. This is a small group. Well, oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they only their have, client base is all dead. They have one customer. <laughs> one customer. And one the f- patient. The founder's mom. One, yeah, it was, it was actually a reporter oh. who was giving the message for the story. So, so, so that he could say he did it for the story. He had, he had some terminally ill made. Well, now, patient. see, now that does surprise me that so. he hasn't had a flock of customers. Because yeah. if, if Miss Cleo, right? Can, <laughs> see, that's what this guy yeah. needs to do. He needs to actually, make that, some stupid that's, infomercial. That's that's what the commercial said. Is most people want to hear back from their dead relatives. They don't want to give them messages to the relatives. I see. And, so, and, so and what it, psychics pr- promise yeah. is that they they'll give you a message from the dead relative. Exactly. Not that well we'll have not the other way around. We'll have this other guy die. You know who's about to die. <laughs> give the message on. And the idea is, well, how do I hear if he's not if he's not giving you know his exactly? I guess people are are no all, there are these people are only about ninety eight percent gullible because there's that little two percent of their brain that's working that says, well, how do I get a message back? So, um, <laughs> but still, it's yeah. a, that's funny. That's so, funny. So yes, that's actually real. afterlifetelegrams.com. dot com. Afterlifetelegrams dot com. Wow. So, okay. And they have a they have a long fact. They talk about you know there are many reasons why your message may not be may not be delivered. <laughs> and so you know, be warned. <laughs> One, this is all BS. <laughs> Yeah, the guy even said in the article that he doesn't really put all that much belief in this heaven and hell stuff. So, you know, where that kind of puts it, I don't know. So he, so you know, it's kind of like the president, he, the was, president of this, Ford getting up there saying, I don't know about all these car things. Yeah. Out there. Well, is he, is he like almost admitting that maybe this is a prank? I mean, okay, I it's a real know. service he's providing. It's an actual but service. To, but to him, it may be a joke. I, I think it's probably, yeah, a little more yeah, okay. of a joke. Yes, and also he is. A, but then now he could get legal a trouble. With comic this. book artist, I think, hmm. or he works in comics or something like that. Oh, and so I think. No one I know. And so, <laughs> yes. Martin, what have you been doing? Yeah. Um, but I think uh, they kind of mentioned the article that he's doing this, possibly as a hopes to as a as a thing to get his you know, floundering career <laughs> off the ground. <laughs> See, most guys just start drawing por- porn comics. You know? yeah. That's how, you know, if you're a car- comic book artist and your book isn't selling, do porn. I mean, that's, that's, how, that, that's how it works for everybody else. So, so well, that is funny. So, yes, that is actual real. I just, oh. I didn't have the story, but I just remembered it. So, hmm. that's cute. Okay. All right. Well, we should maybe just do one more. I don't think I'm going to do this today. I mean, I'll save this. Okay. Just for time's sake, and then we'll, we'll go into, we're starting to get calls, and, you know, we're. Okay. Uh, well, 20 minutes into story. the show already, so we'll go ahead and... And this and, is a quick story. All right. Uh, these are some nuns. 
nuns. Out in, um, actually, it doesn't really say where they are. At least I can't find it right at this moment. Uh, Denver, ah. Colorado. Three nuns accused of defacing a missile silo by swinging hammers and painting a cross on it with their own blood. Damn. They were carrying out a peaceful protest that did not jeopardize national security, a defense attorney says. Sisters Ardeth Platt, 66, uh, and two others are accused of breaking into a Minuteman 3 missile silo site in Colorado's Northeast Plains, October 6th. Oh, gee, I feel so good about our nation's security now. I know. I mean, if three nuns, well, of course, you know, the guy might look at a nun going, And oh, most of nuns, these are but... over 60. 68 yeah. years old. So what? Did the gu- did, did, Were there any guards at the facility at all? Or did they just look at him and say, oh, well, there are a bunch of elderly I don't nuns? Know. I heard something in another article. It doesn't mention it in this article at all. But I heard it somewhere else that it may have been a closed down one. It was closed. Okay, so it wasn't oh. actually in use. But, you know, still. At the time. Hmm. But still, even a, you know, that's yeah. still kind of frightening. Um, they've been charged with interfering with a nation's defense and causing property damage of more than $1,000. Well, but then if it's closed, then so. why are they using that uh, charge? Interfering with the nation's defense, so they shut down missile missile silo. Yeah. Well, who knows? Uh, Hudson's attorney said... I guess maybe because there really is no law to just, like, against using your own blood to paint it. You cross on it, you know. (laughs) It's kind of frightening, yeah. It's it's gross, Um, but it's like... Yeah. They entered into an innate site to protest. They read Bible verses about pounding swords into plowshares and saying hymns. It's like anyone around... Well, someone must have seen this, but I mean, (laughs) usually the point of doing a protest is you want an audience, right? You want to be seen. You get your word out there. Were there people just happen to be hanging around this missile silo that... I don't know. know, Doesn't go into that. The nuns could receive up to 30 years in prison if convicted. Oh, yeah. Well, they'll they'll never... Yeah. They won't see a day of jail. I mean, yeah. Even if they'll, you know, if if they'll they'll cop some plea and... Yeah, I mean, yeah, but swinging, cr- sing- swinging hammers and painting crosses with your own blood. But it was a nonviolent protest. First you Hammer. torched that orphanage, then you blew up that boss full of nuns. Hey, that was self-defense. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Simpsons equals reality. All right. You know, they just, they just, they're a little ahead of the time, that's all. Yeah. Okay, and uh, uh, yeah, let's do. Let's go ahead and go to calls. Okay. Let's talk to Peter now. You're saying all I do is I just hit this button, then, right? Uh, yes. We have a new phone thing, new phone so box. I'm I'm gonna push something that's gonna blow up. I just know it. So, hi, you're on the air. Is he on the air? Hi. Hi. Yes. How you doing? Thanks for calling. Um, I was just wondering if uh, homosexuality is uh, accepted in the atheism, uh, like religion. Well, um, well, first off, you know, a couple things. Um, a homosexual uh, homosexuality is, you know, in 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 our opinion, not a thing that uh, you know. I mean, some people are gay or some people are straight, and it's not anybody's business but that person what their own private lives are like. Right. So, what they do in the privacy of their own home, in their own time, and in their own lives is is not a thing that uh, you know is anyone else's business but their own. So, um, so in terms of accepted, I, we we don't I don't I don't even know that it's a thing that uh, you know to take a position of acceptance or non acceptance about it. I think is is just innately kind of arrogant. Uh, secondly, um, you know, atheism is, you know, while it, you know, some people may I- I embrace or, pra- or, 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 or oh. act upon their atheism in, in a manner that can be considered religious, atheism is mainly more of a philosophical position. You just, you don't believe in God. That's really all it means. Hey, can you so. hear me? So, oh. so that's about it. Okay, so, so um, um, I was just wondering, like, are y'all faggots though? Mm, no, sorry, you'll have to look elsewhere. All right, take care. Anyway. Yeah, this is actually brought up on the email list a while back yeah. for some reason. I don't know why we got on the topic. But, yeah. And the main reason I pointed out is, uh, I think so I was asking, you know, do atheists discriminate against homosexual or something like that? It's like, you only ever discriminate against somebody, or at least you should only discriminate against somebody when it's appropriate to the situation. For instance, we are an atheist group. If we're going to have members, we can discriminate against religious people. Well, that is very yeah. relevant to our thing. Well, yeah, I mean, in terms of, well, why would, why would a religious person even want to be part of the groups? I mean, it's, it's so... That too, but... I don't, again, see, I don't it, see it that is, as it discrimination, It's a, it a factor that we can discriminate against them. We could say that religious sure. people can't join. Now, discriminate, you know, saying that gays can't join the group, well, being gay and your belief or non-belief in God, that, that really doesn't matter. They're not, they don't go together, necessarily. Yeah. 
But this isn't, so it doesn't matter. This the isn't really the point, though. I'm I mean, going to discriminate against gays yeah. is in the dating scene. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Only time. I yeah. don't care if I work with My them or they, you know, they, they want this, the country. But the, but the overall point, right, is that, uh, you know, this is just another of many re- reasons why, you know, in the way in which religion itself is, is deeply, deeply harmful. Yeah. Because it does, it does create this spirit of distrust and hatred for anybody who isn't like you. Now, Christians and Christianity, okay, Christians are people who have just built in to the belief system this ideological bias against, you know, gays and lesbians, yeah. just as people, okay? And this is, you know, you see this in the most extreme form, you get Fred Phelps, you know, the likes of him. But, uh, you know, for the most part, but again, you know, it's all about, uh, you know, since when is it your business to talk about somebody else's yeah. private lives? Yeah, that's so, to it, so. I don't, I, I mean, I know we have a few gay members, but I don't even know how many, because it's, it's not like it, it's anything yeah. you ever talk about. Yeah, it's one of the things that I... I mean, I why know, would it's you? something why? I don't even notice. Well, you know, unless they're, you know, flamboyantly so, I, you know, it, it, it doesn't concern me because I don't care, you know. I, yeah. I work with these people, you know, or something like that. Well, you I know, the, the religious right, the religious right to thinks you should yeah. be concerned about it, you know. They think that gays should not be allowed to marry and, and you know, and raise their own families well, and all the rest of it. They themselves much they want. So, but that, because that's what that, yeah. but then, because that's also what religion is about, is it's all, it's all about sticking your nose into someone else's business. Exactly. So, um, oh, good. Let's see. <laughs> Line one, Sam. Hello? Hey, what's going on? Hey. Hey, what's up? Just hanging. Uh, cool. Got a question? Um, yeah, I got a question. Mm-hmm. Uh, are y'all Christians or do you believe in Christianity? Well, Anything like that? Well, probably not, seeing as how this show is called The Atheist Experience, so that would make us not Christians. Christians do exist. We accept that. Yeah. We just don't think they're <laughs> oh, right. I wasn't asking you. I was asking the other guy, Neil Dick. Hmm? <laughs> okay, goodbye, sir. Yeah. See? So. <laughs> well. Man, what's up with today? Well, are these the post Mormon? <laughs> are these the post Mormon people? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Could be. Could be. Maybe we should do that after all. Yeah. Because uh, these guys seem to. It sounds like they want. This to. is this is fun here. Um, <laughs> well, the first half hour of the show. You know. By the way, look. You know. You want to call us up and ask us questions? Fine. You know. I mean, if you want to call us up and you know, you know, be a goofball, we don't care. I mean, you know, it doesn't doesn't phase us. If you're the one looking yeah. like an idiot. Well, yeah. I mean, it just just makes our case for us. So go right ahead. But. Uh, <laughs> Um, but we're more interested in, you know, talking to people who have actual questions, you know, because that's just more interesting. But this is funny. We were preempted, the first half hour of our show, this is usually 90 minutes, uh, by some, by a Mormon conference. It's an annual thing. This happened to us last year. We lost yeah. our first half hour. I think it happens every year. So, uh, when we do that, we kind of smack around the Mormons a little bit just to, <laughs> you know, well, teach just them to, get to even. <laughs> preempt our show. This is fun. This is all over the internet. It's a little thing, and apparently it's real. Uh, this is, uh... Okay, um, if you if you know anything about Mormons, you've probably seen their little missionary boys, right? These young guys, and they they're usually riding around on bicycles, and they they always wear the same dress shirt and a tie, and they have slacks, even in the heat, and it, it just must be miserable, right? But this is what you kind of do if you want to like be in the Mormon church. Apparently, yeah. if you're a young man a certain age, yeah. you do you go out on these little you know, missionary trips just around. Yeah. You know, you don't go anywhere exotic, like you just go yeah. around, around your, you know, your town, but. Um, Evidently, someone in the Mormon church is <laughs> cognizant of the temptations that young men face when they're all by themselves. And uh, this is something called Steps to Overcoming Masturbation, a Mormon guide. That's all over the net. I'm not going to read the whole thing because we're going to take some more calls, but uh, just for a couple minutes. Um, this is all about, um, well, exactly what it says. And, and it starts <laughs> off, it's very lengthy. It says, be assured that you can be cured of your difficulties. So right there, oh, guilt, oh, creepy, scary stuff, penises. Ah. <laughs> many, many have been cured, both male and female. And you can also be, if you determine that it must be so, the determination is the first step, da-da-da. So then they go on, and, it'll say, and it, starts, it starts out saying, never touch the intimate parts of your body except during, during normal toilet practices. Uh, avoid being alone as much as possible. Find good company and stay in this good company. Because apparently this is like a know, social an irresistible urge. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, no, here's where it gets interesting. If you are associated with other persons having this same problem, you must break off their friendship. <laughs> Never associate with other people having the same weakness. It's sounding like, you know, drug counseling, right? <laughs> they're, 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 making, they're making masturbation sound like it's this social activity. Okay. <laughs> you know, don't hang out with other people who are masturbating. You know, it's, it's Never like, have. <laughs> like I say, first one's free. Come on, man. Oh, well. All right. Anyway, here's the thing. Uh, it says, you must get away from people of that kind. Just to be in their presence will keep your problem foremost in your mind. 
Well, yeah, I mean, if you're hanging out with somebody who's, you know, <laughs> choking his chicken right in front of you, you'd be, you'd be thinking a great deal about that subject while you were running away. Yeah. Okay. Um, the problem must be taken out of your mind, for that is where it really exists. You know, kind of like God, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Your mind must be on other, more wholesome things. When you bathe, do not admire yourself in the mirror. <laughs> Never stay in the bath more than five or six minutes, just long enough to bathe and dry and dress, in all capitals, and it says, and then get out of the bathroom <laughs> into a room where you will have some member of your family present. <clears throat> well, it's not like they want to watch. <laughs> now, you know, this is fun, and it goes on, and it says, and then it gives you suggestions. Uh, uh, so I, I want to leave some of this for people to discover themselves, because it's great. It's like... Set goals of abstinence. Begin with a day, then a week, then a month, year, and finally commit to never doing again. Until you commit yourself to never again, you will always be open to th temptation. Um, now, this is... Uh, okay. My, make a pocket cal calendar for a month on a small card. This is great. <laughs> Carry it with you, but show it to no one. <laughs> yeah, good idea. Right, because somebody saw you, you had got your little PDA out right. and saw your calendar and it said, do not masturbate today on it. <laughs> little to-do note. Yeah, you would be the butt of jokes until the day you died. So <laughs> certainly, so do not do this. Do not, if you make this, do not show it to anyone. Um, if you have a lapse of self-control, color the day black. I don't think that's the color that comes out, but there you go. Your goal will be to have no black days. The calendar becomes a strong visual reminder of self-control and should be looked at when you are tempted to add another black day. <laughs> Keep your calendar up. Now, if you do lapse, <laughs> and then we don't want to, if you, uh, yeah, it seems to me all you have to do is pick a more cheerful color and then you're just right back to doing it. Keep your calendar up, whoops, pun, until you have, <laughs> until you have at least three clear months. And then finally it says, in very severe cases, how, how bad does this get for Mormon guys? In very severe cases, it may be necessary to tie a hand to the bed frame with a tie in order that the habit of masturbating in a semi-sleep condition, who does this, can be broken. This can also be accomplished by wearing several layers of clothing, which would be difficult to remove while half asleep. So, <laughs> wow. You poor These are God. determined yeah. people. <laughs> so, um, young Mormon men either severely, seriously, badly need to get laid, or <laughs> but this is now all all indications are that this is actually a real thing. This is not like some prank, yeah. some joke thing that somebody put up. I mean, there's you know, so let's all over the web just do like a Google search for Mormon masturbation, and it'll come right come right up. Ah, I did it again. <laughs> okay, so that was funny. <clears throat> Since you know we're on a we're sexual, on sexually today. themed show today. Oh well. Um, Elisha, and then there is, oh, oh Dave. What line is Dave on? Then why does Elisha have a two after her name? Oh, okay. Now okay. we understand what your cryptic code is. <laughs> uh, we have, uh, thank you. All right. All right. Good. Okay. Well, I wasn't here. Hi, you're on the air. Hi. What's, Hi. uh, what's up? I had a question about something you said a couple minutes ago. Mm, okay. You said that Christians are inherently anti-homosexuals, as in referring to the people. Shouldn't have made a broad generalization, but yeah. some some Christians... Well, uh, hold on. I mean, I think yeah. you're... I, I would fall in the conservative group that you're referring to, but it's a difference between the individual and the act. Right, okay. I mean, so, what do you... How do I put this? Mm -hmm. What you do in your, is your business, you mm -hmm. know? And I know it sounds kind of weird, but... You know, God doesn't propose to judge a man till the end of his day, so I'm mm -hmm. not going to either. Mm -hmm. I know you don't think God's going to judge you anyways, but mm -hmm. hey, either way, um, I guess I guess you realize that. But. Well, it, my thing is, okay, like most straight people, as a straight person, you know, I, I might find the act personally distasteful. You know, I think most straight people probably do, but... The difference is between those people who decide to take an attitude of bigotry and prejudice against homosexual, homosexuals as individuals, you know, denying them family rights, you know, jobs or what have you, um, you know, judging their character as people um, based upon their sexual preference. Now, if you're not somebody who does that, well, then fine. Well, you know. do you, by the way, do you understand the philosophical significance of sex? Uh, I don't really think about it in those mm -hmm. terms, philosophical but philosophical sense. Not really. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know it sounds kind of funny, but yeah. you see, sex is the unique state of intimacy that is symbolic of the intimacy that we're supposed to have with God, and that wow. 
And also, interesting. The, union, That's a new one. Okay. the union between a man and a woman mm-hmm. in, in terms of marriage mm-hmm. is also symbolic of the relationship that the Church has with Christ. This okay. is mentioned several times in Paul's epistles. Okay, now I just want to I just want to make it perfectly clear that I understand what you're saying here. You're saying that um, the sex act is symbolic of man's relationship to God. Yes. Okay, so then because it's the most intimate relationship on earth. Okay, but then do so. Are you saying then that most that that's how a lot of Christians view their religious practice as being? A, a, do they sexualize it? Is that, I mean, is that how it's really supposed to be? Are you supposed to think of God sexually? Or is it supposed to be more of like, as I understood it, the concept was it was much more of a, a deeper sort of emotional, spiritual, whatever word you wanted to use, way of thinking of love, not sexually at all. Well, sexually is not just the physical aspect of it. There's also the emotional aspect and a spiritual aspect going on at the same time. Sure. I'm just, I, I'm just bewildered because I've never heard a, a Christian mm-hmm. say this before. So it's... Uh, well, I mean, I don't... To be blunt with you, I'm one of the um, Bible-only types, so I don't care what the other Christians think. I care what the Bible says, so, you know. Okay. Um, And frankly, I mean, that's what it talks about several times, like in the um, epistles as well as... uh, Okay. You know, when when they say why you shouldn't, like, go to a to a prostitute Uh when Paul's talking about it. Okay. So, So, I mean, similarly... I mean, I understand the Marriage Act, you know, as being, as having this holy significance, but I never understood just the simple act of sex... Uh, being symbolic of man's relationship to Christ. Well, the thing is, in the Old Testament, when they started mm-hmm. worshiping other gods, mm-hmm. he called it adultery. Or the prophets of God called it adultery, I guess I should say. Yes, uh, adultery. Okay. And so that was... Yeah, we'll be happy to, I'll be happy to read, read up on that. Just... Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And we do realize that most 95% of Christians out there are not the Bible-thumping, you know... Well, we know you wanna, not wanna, bigoted, you know, not prejudiced. Exa- to, yeah. Exactly. I mean, and, they're and they're not over-the-top type thing. Yeah. Those are the mi- those are the vocal minority, unfortunately. Yeah. But if, but at the same time, you have to realize that there uh, that there is a great deal of you know anti gay, um, you know the, yeah. the positions that the that scripture takes in regards to how much sexuals are um, well. Yeah, and, and Leviticus just basically says take them right out and stone them. Well, so that is not mind. exactly a, a, an attitude that uh, you know bequeaths us yeah <laughs> that that spirit of understanding. Well, in the old law, a lot of things were. You got killed for a lot of things. If you were disrespectful to your parents, they took you out and stoned you too. Yeah, yeah. And, so it was kind and, of a different scenario then. Yeah, but I mean, uh, but as I understand it, I mean, don't don't Christians worship worship a God that's supposed to be eternal and unchanging? So I don't see why why would he change his mind? Is is what? <clears> I, yeah, I mean, why would it? Uh, you know, uh, why would uh, I mean? And a lot of the rules that they if, do it, follow if it was okay, are from Old Testament. if it was okay with God to take out uh, homosexuals and disobedient children and adulterous wives and what have you, and stone them, uh, or people eating shellfish uh, or something, and, and stone them to death a couple well, thousand years ago. Well, not all of quite stoning. It, it, it was like, took a very, very rebellious yeah. act to get stoned. And, I mean, to, okay. anyways, I guess what I'm saying is, let's see about that. I think the thing is, is God revealed his holiness a little more in the Old Testament, even though you still see that in the New Testament, too. For example, Ananias and Sapphira just lied about how much money they gave to the church. They said, we sold this plot for this much money, and mm-hmm. actually they'd sold it for more and got more money for it, and God mm-hmm. struck them dead for that, and that's an axe. Right, okay. All right, but anyway, uh, just to, but to get back to the original point, though, sure. um, yeah, we didn't mean to, and we shouldn't, throw a broad brush over all Christians for okay. you know, attitudes that they may have of prejudice or not have. So yeah, um, sure. but but in the in the end though, I mean you have to admit that uh, you know the people who are deeply deeply homophobic have very strong are based based that upon very strong religious convictions. Whether, however, it is they interpret the Old Testament scriptures or what have you. But the and, but the thing about that is is it's based on a logical inconsistency because they don't hold to the same standard the other sexual sins that they hold homosexuality. It's not like they say, oh, you slept with your girlfriend before you got married. Uh well, I guess you're going to marry her, so whatever. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. they don't treat it with the same severity. So it's it's logically inconsistent, mm-hmm. the, the severity with which they say it. Oh. And also, the Bible's clear that God doesn't hate anybody. Mm. God loves everybody. He hates sin, but he loves the individual. Okay, but, but then I... Uh, treat them very, very, very poorly. Yeah. The uh, people that he loves. Well, not only that, but it, it just uh, it seems to me that someone who loves everyone would not set them an ultimatum under, under which uh, one is required to... Uh, to a worship or or be a, be a consigned to an eternity in hell that doesn't that doesn't strike me as being the way a loving a being behaves you know but that's that's just how we see it well don't you think that a loving god would create a way 
A for, way for what? Would create a way so that, you know, if we screwed it up, if we screwed up, like the Bible says, mm-hmm. okay, that we did, that a loving God would make a way, a sacrifice, so that we could be joined back to him. Further, we know from the old, like, okay, the, the Bible says, just assuming it's true to show it's consistent, that there's an adversary. Don't you think he would create counterfeits? Uh, well, I, I think that this is all sort of getting beside the point. Well, no, yeah. it's not. It, it's, we're, we're looking at it from a different perspective than you are. Let's put it that way. Sure, that's fine. Um, I mean, it seems to me that the, 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 the conditions would not exist in the first place under which God would have to create this ultimatum to present to the human race if God were this all-loving, uh, all-forgiving, uh, omnibenevolent being. An okay. all-loving God essentially God would is say, not all-forgiving. Well, an all well, right, loving, an but he's, all well, he's forgiving God, to Christians. An all-loving God would say, everyone gets to go to heaven, that's it. Now, if you screw something up, then maybe you can go to hell as punishment, not the other way around. Well, it would ha- it has to do... teaches that immediately you're scum, you're going to hell, and that's it, what, exactly what you deserve. Well, it has to do with the punishment being all out of proportion to the perceived offense, right? That's now, true. I can understand, but, but, but even if you take the most vicious crime uh, that can be committed on earth, right, okay... Every crime in this, you know, in this lifetime, which is the only one we know that we have, is a crime of finite proportions. Okay, even even if it's you know some horrible despot like Stalin or Hitler or you know somebody like even those people committed a finite number of crimes. Okay, and this whole idea of infinite punishment for finite crimes is is just completely, I think, um, morally suspect. But then when you lump into that. The simple act of deciding not to questioning God's existence. Yeah. I and mean, here's a God who does not make his existence unambiguously clear, and yet simply for doubting this God's existence for that very reason, yeah. this God will consign you to an eternity of torment. We're in being hell. painted with the same brush as Hitler yeah. and Stalin. And I don't and, and I don't see that there's any there, there's any way to morally justify that. You're forgetting something and you're forgetting the justice of God. Uh, but there is no justice. Well, there. well, let him explain what the God how is, how is, is how there's justice in this situation. God, God is okay. According to the Bible, God is good. It's an axiomatic statement. The definition of what we understand is good is bound to God. He's so then, the when God sent two bears to slaughter forty-two children for making fun of the prophet Elijah's bald head, that was a good thing to do. You know, I mean, the thing is about that. It was a good thing to do. Yes or no? It was, it, it was reflective of his holiness, that they were... So not slaughtering only, they were 42 not children is a reflection of his holiness. They were being critical of him. So, so sending bears to slaughter children is a reflection of God's holiness. And they weren't children. They were like more like 17, 18-year-olds. I don't see... I've read that scripture several times. I don't care if they were times. grandmothers. Yeah. Yeah. So what if they were 17, 18 years old? So what if they, they were, were? But even though the, but the, there's nothing in scripture to indicate that. God. I'm sorry? They were belittling God. No, they were they were making fun of a man's an old man's bald head, the prophet Elijah. Yes, but well, okay, maybe I need to reread the okay, story. Okay, let's say they're making fun of God. Let's let's say they're let's say they're just being uh, jokers, and they're they're cracking a joke. Okay, still sending bears to massacre them—that's reflective of holiness. Okay, Those maybe kids like actually deserve that. Okay, now if it's for for making joke of a bald you know, about someone's bald head, let's say the prophet Elijah is man is is God's avatar on earth. So let's say it's the same moral equivalency of making fun of God. Isn't okay? Maybe drop dropping a rock on their you know a little pebble on their heads or giving them a sore foot or something, you know, because it's a joke, it's a prank. Sending bears to massacre them—that's a holy thing. Forty of them. Yeah. It's holy because it is just. It's it just, just that's wait a minute. Not just. It's just to kill people over a joke? No, no, over, not, over, not for, over, a, over a smart mouth remark? Not for humans to do that, but if God does. It, oh, so, so whatever God does is just. So, so, then, so then how is there any... So uh, now I want to understand the moral consistency here. God is basically this a do as I say, not as I do God? Is that, is that, is that a valid moral uh, No, he, he gives parameters under which, you know, you can kill somebody. It says thou shalt not murder. It doesn't say thou shalt not kill. That's an... That's the problem with the King James translation is it doesn't was not updated to, okay. to reflect that change. So, what would be a permissible uh, um, uh, 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 grounds for killing under under God's um, aegis? Okay, um, war, for example. Okay, so were these children at war? Were they waging <laughs> war on the prophet Elijah? Were they like coming after him with swords and clubs and sticks? I was sticks? referring to under a case of which it would be 
Okay. Okay. Look, you're saying you're saying that God was justified in doing this massacre with the bears and the kids. Okay. You're trying to say was you're trying to say that this was a morally justified act. So, if if then one if then a a reason that a morally justified killing would be one in times of war. Was this an act? Was was it an example of one? Okay, not the only one. Give me the example under which it is morally acceptable for God to send forty-two bears to slaughter. Uh, uh, forty uh, send two bears to slaughter forty-two. Let's say they're seventeen and eighteen years old. Let's not say they're ten or twelve or whatever. Even though the scripture says it's children or young men, young lads, uh, give me the condition under which that becomes a morally acceptable thing for God or anyone to do. Here's the thing. Here's the big thing. Okay. We a lot of times in, in these discussions, we forget the absolute holiness of God. Look, forget that's, how, but that's, that's, your, that's your premise. I don't necessarily accept that premise. Well, I'm, I'm just arguing for consistency. I'm not arguing necessarily that you should. Okay, so then, so, so then so your you position. would agree with the fact that God could be a real SOB. No, but, but for he's God doing to, things that are, you know, SOB-like if it were a person doing it. But he, since God does it, it's justified and good. He could be perceived as an SOB because we are limited beings in our understanding of what he's doing. Yeah, and okay. i got to admit that, you know, I usually, you know, think of, uh, you know, somebody, you know, engaging in killing and massacring, whether they're using bears to do it or not. Yeah, I do. I, uh, maybe I have this limited view that makes me think of that as a bad thing. This is but a it seems to me that your case. position... It's not like he does this all the time. But he, the, he, he did it lots of times. The fact that he, you know... I. Assessment. Jeffrey Dahmer was a special case, all right? I mean, we can make special case allowances. The fact is, it seems to me that what your position, your, your entire premise is, anything God does is good, even if for a human being to do it, it would be completely morally unconscionable. Unconscionable. And what I have to say then is, how is it possible for a being like that, or for that to be the basis for any kind of system of morals that human beings can live under? Because that completely destroys moral distinctions. To, to, to say God's a moral authority and he sets the rules and parameters under which people can do what they do, killing, murdering, uh, you know, committing adultery or not, being married, being gay, being straight, what have you, etc., etc., etc. But whatever God wants to do is fine well, here's because he's thing. God and he's all good and that's axiomatic and you cannot make any moral judgment against. I mean, if you train two bears and then sick them on a bunch of, you know, school children if they, if for making a nasty remark about you, you know, you or I, we'd all be absolutely horrible people and we'd probably deserve to go to jail for that. Somehow it's okay for God to do it. One other thing, though. God Wait, no, I'm trying to get an explanation for that. See, the thing is, is if you believe in God, you would have to say that God gave them the life. Therefore, he is the only one who has authority to take it, unless he specifies specific occasion on which individuals could take it. How is that a good thing? How is that, how, how thing? Is that? How is that a nice thing? To say, how does that make God a nice guy? To say, okay, well, I create life, and just because I created it, I have the right to take it just at, at, at my whim. He how, wasn't how is going that? to, and the only reason we have death is because we sin. That is a concept er- I mean, obvious yeah. in the Bible. But, but still, I'm trying to get to God as a moral authority. And how do you have a moral authority who says, well, first off, anything I do is fine, okay? Because I'm axiomatically good at all times, okay? But you're flawed, horrible people, well, then so what you have do you this list of rules. What basis should use as a moral basis? I'm sorry? What basis should you, do you think there should be of a moral basis? If it's not a... If it's just, if, so, so morality is just blind obedience to authority? No, it's not blind obedience to authority. Well, it's just, it's just do what God says, but right? But there needs to be a basis for it, or else, you know, you're just, it's whatever you want to do. Yes, well, I mean, we think that the basis for moral precepts comes from reason. It comes from people living together and learning through trial and error how to get along. Now, how, how is that less, I mean, how is just following the dictates of a moral authority who quite frequently behaves immorally himself, but he, but but he's God, so it's okay. How is that well, any sort of a sound with, basis for morals? With your line of thinking there about morality, is that Hitler, in his murder of all the Jews, was entirely logical about it. He was entirely rational. The thing is, is he believed that the Jews were a lower race, and therefore he should kill them out and thus help them. The gene pool. He was rational in his thinking. Well, we he, may, that- he may have had an internal logic to his line of thinking, right? I mean, the statement, all dogs die, George Washington is dead, therefore George Washington was a dog, is a logical statement. No, okay? no, you didn't say everyone I mean, everyone that's a logical dies. statement. That, that's a missing middle. If you, if, but you the know, point if you take is... Logic class, I'll point out the problem with that is you don't say all who die are dogs. That's the missing part of that statement. Hmm? That's true, but still, it is internally logical within its own structure. Now, there's more that you can put to it, to show to, you know, 
disprove it, but still, the point it has to do with moral authority, okay? And again, Hitler though, clearly, I mean, he lost the war, didn't he? So he, Hitler was not operating within a vacuum in which he had this little universe all his own and whatever his rules were, that's what it got to be, okay? What if he but here's won? the thing though, your God does do that. Your God is this absolute authority with his own universe to play with, and he is the guy who gets to say, it is logically consistent for me to uh, send a couple of bears to massacre a whole bunch of children if I don't like the things they're saying about my prophet. Okay, so the example that you're trying to give me about Hitler thinking logically and rationalizing his massacre of the Jews is exactly what, you, what your God is attributed to doing in your own scripture. The thing is, though, is again, people don't understand. Yeah, people don't understand that... The severity uh, of disrespecting God. And well, God no, what I don't understand, what I don't understand is this whole idea that morals are basically simply do what God says. Because it seems to me that that, far from presenting somebody with an actual basis for determining the difference between right and wrong, and in fact completely clouds the issue, and it eliminates the distinction between right and wrong, because as you've just said, God's all good, and if he sends ma- if He sends bears to kill children, there are all manner of justifications that you can do as to why you think it's a good thing for him to do that, even though it wouldn't be a good thing for us to do that. And that is called selective thinking, in my opinion, okay? we got to go on to our next caller, because we right. have a show, a short show today. Sure. But uh, go ahead, you know, call us back next week and, uh, you know, straighten us out some more, why don't you, all right? Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, all right, uh, we lost our young lady, but uh, Jason is on line one, so I don't even know what our time is looking at. Cause, okay, so we have ten minutes left? About. Okay, so we're going to keep trying to do this. Is this Jason? All right, hey, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Oh, thank you for having me on. Yeah, no problem. Um, I wanted to kind of clear up what I think this guy was trying to get at, mm-hmm. um, and then I want to ask you, I've never seen your show before, so I want to ask you... Mm-hmm. Um, why you are, or why both of you guys are atheists, what your beliefs are, to, it, it either brought right. you to, or, or, uh, you were born into believing in atheism, atheism. Um, but God doesn't, doesn't necessarily have, uh, morals. First off, he doesn't change his mind. His, his stuff, his goal is, and he is an all loving God. And he loves everybody. He loves me. He loves you. He loves, Everybody. But if we don't and, love him back, we go to hell. I'm sorry? But if we don't love him back, we go to hell. No, if you... That, that's, that's, that's true to a point in the extent... No, listen, I see it, but hold on. Mm-hmm. It's to the point you have a choice. You know, it's, you, you often hear that, that you're given a choice in this life. And the choice is if you choose God, if you choose Jesus. And basically you go down a path, and if you go down a path and you choose God to be in your heart and guide you through life, then you will, you, you will use the Bible to learn more. And, and these stories that are in the Bible, I'm not a Bible quarter, so I'm not going to mm-hmm. bring anything up, but you, you read these as examples to, to live by, to uh, try to better yourself as a Christian or mm-hmm. a God-fearing person. But you're not, he doesn't, first off, he does not live in sin, and he can't even be associated with sin. It, which makes so, which makes a lot of the uh, abominable acts that are attributed to him in scripture rather puzzling. Right, but they're they're acts that we perform, not acts no. that he performed. Either okay. he performed them or he ordered somebody to perform them. Usually, in a lot of the Old Testament, he's either killing people or telling other people to kill people. Yeah, and again, in the example that we used uh, with the last caller, the previous caller, again, in 2 Kings chapter 2, it's verses 23 and 24, okay, God sends the, the two bears to massacre the 42 children, okay? This wasn't anything that a person did. I mean, so the, I mean, th- this, was a, this was a hit, basically, put out by God on this gang of kids. Whether you want to believe they were teenagers, young men, you know, children, you know, the, the scripture uses the word, uh, you know, uses the word boys. Right, okay, so. but I think you're taking it a little too literally... In this, in the well, isn't that what we're that, told, no, though? That, uh, in you the know. context that God ordered this. You don't necessarily, it, it may not be that black and white. That may not be, that, he may not have necessarily sent the bears to destroy them because it made him mad. It may be a lesson that, that was mm-hmm. to happen in the Bible so that people can later read that example as, 
something Sorry. to live for or live by. Uh oh, so I better God, not. Make, I better not, not make fun of bald prophets. God yeah. can't find a better way to teach people a lesson than to kill forty-two kids with bears. Yeah, I mean, what he could, can't who just. Knows? He's, he's who all knows? powerful. I mean, he can't kids, just put it into everyone's head. Has, those kids died a gruesome death, but yeah, pointless. Point, but the entire point of it all is: is your life on this earth may be good or it may be bad. That, but, that's not really the point. But the could, point couldn't an all-powerful so being... Your life will be glorious. And here, but, here's what he, I'm trying to say. You're looking at it like, you know, why would he... That's so despicable of him to mm -hmm. kill these 42 children. Mm -hmm. That may be just a lesson for us to learn. And an all-powerful, all-knowing being but cannot, cannot come up with a better way of teaching people this lesson. This is, this is a being with no limits to his power, no boundaries upon what he's able to do or know... Or, or put put the thought let me let me finish real quick. Let me finish real quick. You're looking at just mm -hmm. the the life of these children here, but these children, while they may have been sacrificed in a gruesome way, their eternal life. That's all that matters. Is is the eternal. So what do you think? That, so what do you think those kids went? Life with God and and the all loving God. So so God slaughtered them and then brought them to heaven anyway. Is that what that, you think? That's. Hey, that could be possible. I don't know the, <laughs> see, the exact. See, you're story. just, children, you're just. I'm saying you're just. Would, make, okay, let me put it to you this way: we, we, I would more, rather we be get... destroyed by a bear if that's what God had for me. Wow. If <laughs> hey, if if it's going to mean that I'm going to have eternal life with Him, that's hey, whatever. I mean, you look at the perfect example of Jesus uh -huh. Christ. Going through. You know, you know, you're, you're. I'm sorry, but this is this sounds to me like the same line of thinking that says, you know, I'd really if if. If blowing up this building lets me spend all eternity with 45 virgins peeling me grapes, then if that's what I've got to do, that's fine with me. Do you see? No, but, it's but it's crazy. What you're doing, you're just, that, you know, you're, you're coming up with not, a litany. That's not living with God. I know. God is an, is an all-loving. But it's the no, same God, kind of rationalization. You you're coming up, Jason, I understand what you're trying but you're coming up with just a list of excuses, okay, to get God off the hook morally in, in such a way that you can claim him as the moral authority over all humanity, but then when he himself commits an act that is in, incredibly deeply immoral, well, you have to explain that, and you have to fit that in somehow, and, and you come up with this list of but, tortured explanations. We're out of time, what I'm seriously. saying is that sometimes you can't explain it. That's very true. Anyway, because you can't explain everything that he does. Right. Well, I appreciate your call. we got to go on to the next guy because we're about to go off the air. You, before you leave, can you... Uh, can you I want to just get your background on why you're atheist. Okay, um, and I'll, I'll I'll hang up and listen. Okay, uh, thanks. Um, for that, why not go to? Uh, did that hang up? Okay, um, why not go to our website and read the TV show page where we have little biographies? Okay, do we have one more caller that we can take in the last minute or two or not? How much longer do we have on the air exactly? Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, we're not going to take another caller, even though we've got one lined up because we'll, uh, we appreciate all our calls. If you just if this is the first time you've ever watched our show. We're usually on for 90 minutes. We had our first half hour preempted uh, by some Mormon gathering service. That's why we kind of poke fun at them today. <laughs> but we love hearing from all of our callers, and, of course, we love having nice long uh, chats with you. And if you tried to call in and you couldn't get through and you have a question you want to ask us and what have you, cho uh, we choose our viewer email, tv at atheist-community.org. tv at atheist-community.org is the website, of the, the email address for on-air viewer questions. There it is. Uh, viewer emails, it's a section of the show we started up a little while back, uh, but we haven't been on, we off and on erratically, so we haven't had any questions. But send us an email, ask us a question, and we always pick the best questions uh, to go uh, on the air with, and we'll read them out on the air next time. So we should be back next week at our usual 90-minute running time. We start at 4.30 to 6, and every Tuesday afternoon uh, at 4.30 on this same channel, we have reruns. Uh, so uh, feel free to tune into that. And again, we appreciate all the calls. We love to have this kind of debate. And, um, you know, in my opinion, again, I think it's just, it's a lot of excuse making. You know, you have this, yeah. uh, you know, I, but I just don't, uh, don't see how, um, you know, a God who gets to break all of his own rules uh, is, is any sort of a moral authority uh, over me or anyone. It just sounds kind of strange. So do you, I think, I'm told that we have a minute left. So um, do you have anything to, to finish up with? You want to talk about or anything well, coming up that you want to announce? They have that Bible college. Okay. With the phone number 666, is there area code? Oh, yeah, and they got him to change the they prefix? They got to change 693. Well, is, it the, is it the area code or the prefix? I think it was oh, the prefix. One of them, okay. Sure. 
Um, but they also have a Highway 666. And they're changing that? That's getting the name changed also. I tell you, the road, so. to, the road to hell is, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of... Is going anyway, through central Missouri. I don't know. So religion's a very strange, unusual, weird thing, and it's still with us. But, uh, you know, we're here to present the other point of view. So thank you very much for joining us. Thanks always to our crew. Um, <clears throat> and remember, next time, until next time, theists, we, we don't, don't hate, hate you. you. We, we just, just think, think you're, you're wrong. wrong. Bye-bye. Everybody have a great have a week. Weekend. And... Again, I have no much, I have no idea how much time we have left. So we're just gonna <laughs> 15 seconds. All right. Bye bye.